Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics and funded by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. This webinar led by Ms. Shakira Gore aims to discuss the importance and value of a medical home and primary care for children and families, learn more about the medical home community team, and the goal of providing home visiting and care coordination services for families to help address social determinants of health and child development. The medical home community team offers assistance to Philadelphia County parents and their children with and without special health care needs ages 0 to 21 years of age. <clears throat> the medical home community team services include comprehensive needs assessments, individualized health education, referrals and linkages to behavioral health, transition to adult medical care support, community organizations and service coordination in conjunction with partnered medical homes. My name is Dr. Renee Turchie and I'm a pediatrician at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children and medical director of the Pennsylvania Medical Home Initiative at the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. This webinar is being recorded and will be available upon request. Please be advised that none of the speakers today have any disclosures. Please note that the information presented in this webinar is educational in nature and does not necessarily represent the views or policies of the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics or its funders. Now please allow me to introduce our presenter for today's webinar. Shakira Gore is the program manager for the Medical Home Community Team, a home visitation program at the Health Promotion Council, a subsidiary of the Public Health Management Corporation. Ms. Gore received her Master's of Social Work from Temple University and Bachelor's of Human Development and Family Studies with a minor of Sociology from Penn State University. She brings more than seven years of experience working in clinical treatment centers, early intervention and case management, serving adults and children with developmental disabilities and behavioral challenges. Ms. Gore's current role involves providing home visitation services to families, supervision of staff, program oversight, managing deliverables, and reporting. We are delighted to have our partners at the Medical Home Community Team and Ms. Gore present on the Medical Home Community Team for primary care clinicians and practice teams. Ms. Gore, at this time, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you for being here with us today. Yes, thank you, Dr. Kirti. Um, as you said, my name is Shakira Gore. I am the program manager for the Medical Home Community Team. Today's presentation objectives, um, at the end of this presentation, participants will have gained an understanding of the Medical Home Community Team program, learn program strategies for a family-centered care based on a medical home model, care delivery with families of children with and without special needs, and to discuss community-based care coordination efforts. The Health Promotion Council, HBC, is a nonprofit corporation that was funded in 1981 to implement community-based hypertension education and control programs. Today, Health Promotion Council possesses more than 30 years of experience in chronic disease prevention and management through direct service, capacity building, and policy and systems change initiatives. Using this approach, HBC empowers individuals and families and addresses the environment in which they live, work, learn, and play. The medical home community team lives as a collaborative between the Health Promotion Council a public health management corporation affiliate, the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Medical Home Initiative, and the Philadelphia Department of Public Health, Division of Maternal, Child, and Family Health. A medical home is best described as a model or a philosophy of primary care that is patient-centered, comprehensive, team-based, coordinated, accessible, and focused on quality and safety. It has become a widely accepted model for how primary care should be organized and delivered throughout the healthcare system, and is a philosophy of healthcare delivery that encourages providers and care teams to meet patients where they are, from the most simple to the most complex condition. It is a place where patients are treated with respect, dignity and compassion and enable strong and trusting relationships with providers and staff. Above all, the medical home is not a final destination. Instead, community involvement is also a major component in the model for achieving primary care excellence. 
patient-centered medical homes transform primary care practices into what patients want, health care that focuses on them and their needs. The medical home community team mission is to bridge in the gaps between Philadelphia families and community health and social support. The medical home community team goal is to improve the access and overall quality of care for families, ultimately lead into better health outcomes. Speaking to what we do, we work to strengthen the relationship between patients and partner medical homes by providing coordinated care through multiple platforms. MHCT, MHCT excuse me, serves to assess and address the needs of patient families by conducting home visits and linking families to health care resources and social services. Our team profile is made up of a multidisciplinary team of individuals with our program director having experience in providing domestic violence, crisis intervention services, and has worked in family-centered care and community health work program development for more than eight years. Our program manager brings more than seven years of experience in clinical treatment centers, early intervention, and case management, serving adults and children with developmental disabilities and behavioral challenges. Our community health nurse has over 25 years of experience serving the diabetic and substance abuse patients centered around a two-generational approach. Our bilingual community patient navigator brings in over 25 years of social work experience providing domestic violence and child abuse prevention services and develop a women's center focusing on domestic violence and child abuse prevention. She is also a certified smoking cessation counselor. One of our community health navigators brings experience in community outreach, hospital administration, research and evaluation for nonprofits in Philadelphia. And our final community health navigator has over six years of experience in working in sexual health, maternal child health, reproductive health. And also she has experience in program development with various public health programs within Philadelphia. Our program aims to improve health outcomes with enhanced care coordination for children with and without special health care needs, increases family members' understanding and capacity of each child's unique developmental needs, and strengthens the parent and child skills in navigating the medical and social service system. MACT has seven strategies that we work towards achieving each year. The first strategy is maintaining high quality collaborative relationships with fully implemented pediatric medical homes. Our second strategy is enhancing care coordination and support for children and youth with and without special needs in partnership with the Philadelphia Pediatric Practices adopting the medical home model. Our third strategy is expanding upon the medical home's community and social service resources in order to enhance care for their patients. Our fourth strategy is to increase the capacity of the medical home to address patient health literacy needs in logistically and culturally appropriate ways. Our fifth, our fifth strategy is to establish an, an effective partnership with the PAAAP MHI to increase the number of fully implemented medical homes. Our sixth strategy is to collaborate with the PAAAP MHI to enhance the capacity of medical homes to prepare youth with special health care needs for transition into adult care. Our final strategy is to establish and maintain an effective partnership with the PAAAP MHI to support overall project objectives. Who we serve? MACT serves patients of the American Academy of Pediatric Medical Homes. We also serve residents within the Philadelphia County, ages birth to 21, and children with and without special health care needs. 
We also can enroll multiple children. MACT doesn't just work solely with the referred child. We are able to provide support to the child's siblings and their parents or guardians, recognizing that we cannot just provide support to the child and leave the rest of the family out of the picture, including the siblings and the caregivers as well plays a major role in addressing the well-being of the child and their family. We also work with families that has insurance or without insurance, and also noting that this is a voluntary program. MACT has experience working with various populations, including families living below the poverty line, immigrant refugee populations, and adolescents that lack parental supervision. We've learned that it's important to build trust. And in building that trust, when families develop their goals, they are more receptive to addressing the developed goals. So to speak more about the services that we do, um, MACT is a home visitation service program, meeting the clients in the comfort of their homes or areas where they're the most comfortable. We've done intakes in the community. Uh, we've met families in cafes. We've met families at the medical homes. Um, we've done intakes on a family step. Um, essentially, we like to really meet our families where they are um, that makes them the most comfortable. We also facilitate family needs assessments. And this assessment is an in-depth intake. Um, typically, sometimes the intakes can take up to three hours to complete. Um, it's just basically breaking down the barriers and understanding what the needs are for the family and then to see how MACT can support this family with addressing those barriers. We also do referrals to, to sources for behavioral, mental, and developmental services, specifically to the family zip code. We look into resources that is within the family's neighborhood to um, decrease travel, because we recognize that a lot of families struggle with transportation issues. Um, sometimes they may not have the funds to get into certain appointments and so forth. So we know that it could be in the best interest of the family to look for the resources that is within their neighborhood or easy accessible. We also provide health education and health literacy. And we also assist in navigating through the social service system and community. Speaking to the notion of navigating, MACT focuses on the process of monitoring and assisting families in getting connected. Our navigation team takes the extra mile in ensuring that families are connected successively with confirmed appointments, or we even have attended educational meetings, such as IEPs, and or appointments at social service offices. When our, program is, when our program is introduced to a newly enrolled family, we ensure our families that we will do all we can to support them in making, the, making sure that they are getting connected to the resources that are needed. We, are, we also enhance families' capabilities. Along with assisting the families with navigating through these systems, it is also a learning process for our families, guiding them through the system and not enabling families by doing the work for them, but we teach the skills to help them progress successfully on their own when seeking the resources. We also utilize an interpretation service, um, which has access to over 200 um, languages. Um, this service we have used via phone or in person um, to make to accommodate our service delivery. We also provide resource guides and linkage with community resources for medical homes. Um, with this, we do provide the resource guide specific to the medical homes um, area. So if it's the medical home in North Philly, we will provide um, resources that specifically within that um, medical home um, area. We also facilitate collaboration between the medical homes and community resources. Um, by, informing, by informing practices of new programs or updating the practices or any new information about community resources. We also support the medical homes best practice around cultural competency and awareness of community resources.
MACP um, focuses a lot on family inclusion, being committed to a family-centered practice and focused decision-making. We also have a strength-based approach. This allows our families to recognize and reinforce the family's capabilities and not just their needs and their problems. We also provide individualized service planning. This becomes more personalized, and we're able to respond to both the parents and children, specifically to the circumstances that, of their needs, and be available with the support services that are formal and informal. We also provide comprehensive and concrete services. This allows our program to address the family's broad range of conditions and needs. Lastly, outcomes, focus, planning, and service provision. We will be able to create an intervention plan that establish achievable goals with the family during their time enrolled. Families' intervention plans are broken down per goal to address a specific barrier. MSCT Model for Care provides a program overview of service delivery. Families are enrolled for three months, and at a three-month mark, marking period, families are reassessed to see if services are needed for an additional three months. How families are enrolled is either by recommendation by a provider, where the family may have expressed some interest in MACT or a community-based program. The, the referral is made to the program, then the initial in-home intake is conducted by the program manager. The PM then assigns the family to either a community patient navigator or our community health nurse, who would then develop and create an intervention plan based on the barriers that was discussed during the intake. During that process, the CPN and the CHN will continue to follow up with the family um, to provide the resources and the services and then reassess the goals at the three-month period. During this whole process, it's important to note that we remain in contact with the medical home who made the referral. And with this, we provide progress notes. We inform the medical home on what's going on with the family, or if there's any issues that we may need assistance on, or just informing them in generally what's going on um, with the family. We stay, in, and we stay in consistent communication with the medical homes um, with the referred, about the referred family, excuse me. And then at that point, um, at the three-month period, when we do an assessment, a reassessment, to see if the services are needed, um, we can either discharge the family or we can continue them for another three months. So a lot of times we don't like to say discharge because we do recognize that, that there are problems that, can, that are ongoing. So we like to just work with the families at their pace, but we want to do check-ins to ensure that we are addressing the goals um, effectively and making sure that we are doing all that we can um, to provide the services to the families. Once the families have reached all their goals, then it's safe to um, have the family complete the program and then we can discharge them. So just to... Um, give you an idea of what a case may look like for MACT, um, a parent who has difficulty navigating services and referral, referrals, the child with fetal alcohol syndrome didn't transition successfully to early intervention and was previously in foster care and now in the care of the parents. The parents have financial struggles and issues with aggressive paternal half siblings and child's behavior is now more difficult to manage, and mother would benefit from parenting support. Parents are very cautious of new service providers and, and is in need of encouragement to engage. With this family, MACT successfully reached all program goals within four months. MACT conducted multiple home visits to assist this family with addressing barriers, with education enrollment, connected the family to behavioral health services for family therapy, provided parental relationship resources, facilitated transportation options to accommodate appointments, and assisted the family with social security benefits renewal. 
and provided the family with basic needs, tangible needs such as coats, safety home prevention items, pest management, fire prevention, storage items, organization. Another case example, um, a client requested to be referred to MACT or a community-based program. The client had poor medical appointment follow-up, needed help with care coordination, and the one-year-old with con congenital heart disease, developmental delay, feeding problems, a rare genetic disorder, and family needed assistance with reviewing medication instructions and availability with feet and tube instructions and multiple medical appointment support. When MACT provided services to this family, the family was successfully able um, to complete the program within three months with, along with conducting multiple home visits to address the barriers. MACT recognized that the family had a language barrier and proceeded to address that barrier by involving the medical home once it was found that a language barrier was the main issue, MACT coordinated with the medical home to develop a color coded system that would help the parent administer the child's medication correctly. MACT also assisted the family with obtaining bilingual nursing services for the child. Furthermore, MACT connected the parent to ESL resources and assisted the family with addressing tenant issues. So this just kind of provides an idea of what um, um, referrals our program receives. We ask a lot of times for our medical homes to provide um, thoughtful referrals. And when we say thoughtful referrals, we're thinking more so complex um, referrals, families who have more than one issue, more than one barrier um, that they are trying to um, sort through. Um, we look at these families um, as an uh, ideal family to provide support because we are an effective team and we wanted to make sure that we help this, these type of families address all the barriers um, that, we can, that we can possibly do. Currently, um, these are our current uh, partner medical homes. We're partnered with St. Christopher's Hospital Center for Urban Child. We par partner with St. Christopher's Hospital Special Needs Unit, St. Christopher's Hospital for Adolescent Medicine, Einstein Pediatrics, CHOP South Philadelphia, CHOP Care Box, CHOP Chestnut Hill, Mount Erie Pediatrics, Temple Pediatrics, Red Lion Pediatrics, and the last two practices, Philadelphia Pediatrics and Jefferson University Hospital Continuing Care Program, MACT referred these practices to become fully implemented certified medical homes. Since May of 2017, MACT has successfully uh, serviced over 300 children we also made connections, um, resources, connections to over 450 um, community service providers. We also, 94% of our families enrolled, talked with a home visitor about interpersonal balance and screen for behavioral health. And 75% of our families successively completed our program. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the medical home community team. Our goal is to see this program be extended across Pennsylvania. And I thank you for your time and have a great day. At this thank time, you so much, Ms. Gore. Thank you so much, Ms. Gore. At this time, we are going to open up to questions. You can type your question in the Q&A box, or if you're on the phone, please dial pound six to unmute your line. Again, you can type in the Q&A box or dial pound six to unmute your line. Thank you. Hi, why we're uh, waiting for... Um, my name is Renee Turchi. I just wanted to 
um, <clears throat> hop in here um, and uh, just comment as uh, Shakira, thank you so much for that excellent presentation. Um, I wanted to just comment a little bit on um, some of the cases and just some practical um, application of the work that you're providing. Um, I think that all of us uh, that are practicing clinicians, as well as the you know pedagogy of the American Academy of Pediatrics, you know recognize the critical role of community partners in accomplishing what we do to support patients and families. And I think that one of the things you really hit on in your presentation that I think um, <clears throat> really does um, highlight a lot of what a lot of the, we have done um, at the chapter and the work we do in practice is um, not just partnering with community organizations but the in-home piece that you provide. Um, and so one of the things that um, I wanted to just uh, comment on were some of your cases and maybe even offer some reflections. Um, as you had mentioned, um, as someone who's in Philadelphia um, and has worked with your team personally with my own patients, just, um, you know, you had, you, um, I don't know if folks um, had any comments or have had any other experience um, with programs like yours. I think many of our practices have worked with um, the Elks Nurses and um, Special Kids Network. So I think um, many folks and anyone can, you know, jump in there um, can um, attest to, you know, how helpful it is to have someone in the home because, unfortunately, we're not able to do home visits anymore. Um, one thing that I wanted to just uh, sort of reflect on that I think um, is a really key fundamental thing that um, we've worked on um, with you, Shakira, and I wonder if you can talk about this a little bit. Um, and I know that in the past when our practices have worked with the ELK nurses, um, we also have had um, had this as well is the communication that occurs. Um, because it's one thing, you know, you sort of outlined that great algorithm in your presentation, um, which I think was helpful for folks <clears throat> kind of going through what happens. But I think for many of us, one of the things that often can be a challenge is kind of that, um, <clears throat> you know, that, that loop that occurs. Because sometimes we make um, a referral, but sometimes it's, you know, busy practice, you know, flu season, you know, we're hearing from the CDC that flu season is on the rise. Um, but I wondered if you could comment a bit, Shakira, on your experience. I mean, I certainly can comment on my personal, but I just wondered, I'm thinking folks probably would want to hear from you, about, you know, maybe some successes and then maybe some challenges on um, two-part question with the communication. One is challenges on outreaching to the families. Um, because I know that we've had some of that two families numbers changing and, you know, maybe a patient says to me, hey, Dr. Turchie, I'm willing to allow medical community to come out. And then when you guys reach out, you aren't able to connect with them. That's sort of the first part of my communication area that I was hoping you could reflect on. And then the second one is sharing some of the successes and challenges you may have had with practices across the board in closing that feedback loop on the provider side, the referral source, and what are some strategies and things that you guys have used um, so I was wondering if you could if you could comment on those two scenarios for us. Yes. Um, so um, to answer the first part of the question, um, as far as the communication part, um, like you said, we do go through a period where some of our families um, are unresponsive, and it 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 plays a lot to like what's going on at the time of the year, holidays, um, things such as that. Um, one thing that our program doesn't do, we don't give up. Um, we still um, connect with the family, keep trying to call them. We also um, inform the medical home, um, letting them know, hey, you know, we're finding it a little difficult, you know, trying to reach out to this family. Is there another number? Is there an email? Um, I can speak to one example where I had an issue with trying to get in touch with a family who really um, could use our services. Um, and with that, I asked the social worker if she could call me um, the next time the parent was in the room um, with her. So that happened, and I had an opportunity to speak with the parent. And I believe mom was, you know, a little apprehensive about um, a social service program that comes into her home. Um, but after she spoke with me and, you know, I kind of explained the program to her and, 
basically told her that, you know, our program is going to walk with you um, through these challenges. You know, we definitely understand um, that first, you know, there's a trust um, that we have to build with her. Um, and with that, just having that conversation kind of smooth things over um, to the point where mom, you know, scheduled the appointments to have the intake done, and then the services was provided. Um, so with that, we we don't we don't give up. Um, I usually maybe if I get a referral, um, I give it about three months um, until I can say, all right, well this family um, may really not be interested at the moment. Um, or if a family kind of verbally say they decline, I still reach out to the medical home to let them know um, this family has declined the services, um, but still see, you know, if they would be interested. Because um, we do see a lot of families kind of decline services, but knowing that they um, would really benefit from it. So we kind of still kind of push that envelope to them um, to see if that would be something they would be open to um, once they learn more about our program. Um, and to answer your second part of your question, the feedback part, um, we do a medical home assessment form. Um, and with this, um, we kind of get an idea of the services that's being provided um, from our program, from the medical home, from the family's perspective. Um, and this allows us to gather information specifically for that certain medical home so that when we have um, conversations or we do um, like a case um, consultation with the medical homes, we can, you know, let them know, hey, the family finds that um, this is going well with the practice, or the family finds that, you know, we've been having some trouble, you know, trying to um, get an appointment. So even with the, those little um, situations, um, we take note of that to make sure that we inform the medical homes um, of the parents' um, struggles when it comes to coming to the practices um, and vice versa. And when a family is actually enrolled in our program, like I said before, we stay in communication with the practice, practices consistently. Um, this can be by phone. This can be um, by email. Um, we are always informing the person um, who made the referral um, of the family's progression, you know, letting them know. And then sometimes we actually have to involve the practice um, maybe to help address a certain issue. So we don't, you know, just take the family and enroll them into our program. It's like you would come into our program and you work with us along with the practices as well. That's great. Um, Shakir, we actually do have a question. Um, it says, uh, do you utilize community health workers? And if so, what is their role? Um, so if we were to use um, community health workers, this probably would be uh, programs that are already working with the families. Um, we, so we like to say with us having navigators, um, we look at ourselves as um, assistant of families and going through these different systems. And with these different systems, you know, these are programs um, that are there to provide a specific uh, service. Uh, so with the family's consent, we do contact the programs. Um, if it's a situation that we are addressing where we need the program to be involved, um, with the family's consent, we do contact the programs um, to let them inform them that we are um, also working with the families and see how we can fit in um, with helping the families also. So it's, it's, and even in our referral, we ask the practices as well um, if there are other um, social service programs involved with the family as well. That's great. Thank you. If there's any other questions, please feel free to use the Q&A box at pound six on your phone. Shakira, this is Renee again. Just, you know, you know me, I always have 100 questions, so I was happy to. Happy to ask a couple ones, um, just because I think this is such an important conversation while we're waiting for other folks. So please, if there are other folks that want to either type something in the um, dialogue box or speak out on the line, let us know. Um, but um, <clears throat> just wondered if you could comment on one of the most more challenging or most challenging cases you had, and maybe we can just all talk, not to put you on the spot, but um, you know, mm -hmm. just wondering um, 
you know, what, what are some of the, the cases that, that proved to be most challenging for your team and, and, um, and, what, and what kind of strategies? Uh, you guys, I, I guess I'm just uh, sort of setting you up to shine here because I know your team has a lot of experience. But just kind of wondering, because, you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, right? We're sending you, to give you a chance to answer, but when I sort of take a step back, right, like I think about in some ways, when I think about the role of organizations like yours, it's fairly challenging, right? I mean, again, I'll reflect on our own office policy. So, you know, you're there to help some of our families, lots of the families that um, we're reaching out to you you know, they, they need extra support. And I know, I know that you mentioned earlier in your presentation one of the sort of exclusion criteria for referrals are, um, you know, there's children and youth services involved. And so, you know, in some cases, I can speak for our own practice, sometimes a referral to an organization like yours um, is a, a step before that. I mean, none of us like filing on families. Um, I probably file a lot later than I should because it's just one of those things. I sort of come from things from a place of hope, and I, my social workers are some of my best teachers and trying to help me sometimes recognize that sometimes making referrals, you know, really are putting those supports in place. But I do sometimes feel like when we are making referrals to your team, you know, these, these are sometimes some of our more difficult cases, medically, most, you know, socially complex. And so in some ways, you know, you're in that in-between zone, which almost makes your job even harder in some ways than children and youth, right, in some ways, or for us, because in some cases it's so clear that we need to take extreme measures, you know, child major medical neglect, things like that. So I sometimes feel like we are, you know, sending you families or sending you situations where our office is exhausted, you know, our resources and support. And so it just, you know, it was kind of that lens in mind. Just wonder if you can comment on, on some of those cases that maybe have proved to be pretty challenging. and. I think what's great is, you know, your team and the level of expertise you have. I mean, a lot of you have come from organizations or done things that have worked with families that experienced, you know, a lot of challenges. And not that everything has to be children and youth. It was just an example that I was using. But I, but I guess my whole point in, in my sort of preamble to my question to you is that I feel like sometimes, you know, we are sending you referrals um, for, for some of our more, you know, just difficult scenarios, families facing lots of issues, maybe limited resources, and so just wonder if you can reflect on that for us. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so speaking to that, um, a lot of times we find a challenge with, um, with dealing with a lot of families who um, either have received mandatory services through DHS, um, and with that, we find that these families um, may need like additional education and preventative um, resources or services um, to prevent them from being re-entered into uh, mandatory services. So that, that typically that would be like our biggest challenges with preventing families from going back into um, mandatory services. Um, another challenge um, we face is housing. Um, housing is a big challenge in the city of Philadelphia. So. Um, we, when we enroll families, you know, we don't, you know, give them um, promises, especially if housing is one of the um, goals. Um, we let them know that we will do all that we can to support them. Um, we, with working with um, MCFH and MHI, um, we definitely reach out to our partners to see if there's anything that um, we can do additionally to support these families when it comes to housing um, and getting resources or even finding a shelter um, that would better suit this family. So just trying to um, take extra measures um, to prevent certain, 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 excuse me, certain, 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 certain I'm sorry, I didn't get the word out, excuse me. Um, just to prevent families from going back into um, DHS um, or to find housing resources, we try to um, take that extra measure to help them address it. Yep, that's great. I mean, that's in my experience. I think, you know, having that team approach and the armamentarium multi-pronged, and every family is different. You know, for some families, it's um, it's just I just think there's a variety of um, supports that families need, and I think I think to me the big take home is just that you know referrals are um, and in-home supports are really just meant to um, strengthen and uh, build 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 that rapport. So thank you for answering mm -hmm. questions. I don't know, um, Eileen, are there any other 
questions or comments? There are no more questions at this point. If any do arise, we will be sure to pass them on to Shakira, and she will be able to respond later. Um, Shakira, we just want to thank you very much once again. We thank the Department of Health for sponsoring this. If there's no other questions, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.